Hello and welcome to Frotch on Fighting with me, Carl the Cobra Frotch, former unified super middleweight world boxing champion and international boxing hall of famer. You know, don't you? You know, get on my level. <laughs> anyway, this episode is brought to you by Cobra Casino. Right, if you've not seen the last episode, get a look. We talked about Jack Cattrall and Pro Gray's fight. That was a great fight. And we also did tattoo into the UFC world. But anyway, I'm delighted to be joined by the man from Saturday night, Jack Cattrall himself. How are you, Jack? Very well, Carl. Very well. A couple of days since the fight, so I've been spending some bit of downtime with uh, my wife and my daughter. But no, all is good. Thank you for having me on. No, pleasure, mate. Pleasure to have you on. I've been wanting to talk to you for a while, actually. I mean, when I'm in Spain, I've got a couple of close friends out in Spain, and they're always talking about it. I don't know if, if they know your family. I don't want to start name-dropping, but they're saying, when are you going to get Jack on? And I think um, my friend knows your mum quite well. And I said, listen, I'll be getting Jack on soon. But Jack, Jack's a guy that should be crowned world champion. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, obviously, following the first Josh Taylor fight, 99% of people thought you won that one. And you obviously didn't get the decision, but you, you, you're on the right path. You've beat a great fighter on Saturday night in Regis Progre, proven that you belong at world level again. And um, yeah, what do you make of the fight? How did you think it went? Yeah, you know what, Carl? I'm, uh, so after the, the rematch that we had in May, I found myself in a position where we got the rematch. It wasn't for the world title. Uh, the divisions opened right up. We've got four champions now. So, But there was no shot of the world title. I'm led to believe that after the, the Taylor rematch, I, I could possibly get a world title shot. That wasn't the case. So I found myself straight back in the gym and my instructions to, to Sam Jones, to Eddie Hearn was, well, if it's not a world title, I, I'm not going to get up without being like disrespectful. You give me a lower level fighter, I'm probably going to underperform. Uh, I need something where I've got a bit of fear factor um, and I get up for the fight. So when they mentioned Regis Progre, I was actually at his fight in December against Devin Haney, uh, seeing him fight. Um, <laughs> I was hoping to get the winner. I got the loser. But nevertheless, we knew two-time world champion. He's been around the block, strong fighter. So I, I'm not gonna, I've been in a position before in my career through no fault of my own. I stay in the gym. I'm fit and ready. Boxing politics fucked me over. I got kept out of the ring. So I said, I'm not, I'm not prepared to sit and wait. I've got to make something happen. So we took the fight with Regis and I got the victory at weekend. It was a, it was a tough fight. Um, and I think you'll know more than anybody. It was it was a funny one. I felt like I boxed well, well enough, and I deserved the victory. I'm quite a harsh critic. I'm not making excuses. I wasn't 100% going into that fight. But I think I've got to give myself a little bit of credit because I pulled through. A couple of shaky rounds at first. I won't say shaky rounds, pretty dull rounds. Let's not beat around the bush. They weren't the most exciting. I think after round four or five, I think it kicked in a bit then and I did what I needed to do to get the victory. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I remember listening to an, um, um, an interview with Eddie Hills. Um, sorry, Eddie Hearn, your promoter. He, um, he was talking about, he was panicking. He did, he did a similar thing with, with me when I was fighting um, Glenkov Johnson because I started slow and he starts panicking. He thinks, oh no. And it was one of them where you sat back and you was looking for the counterpunch. Regis didn't really want to commit, did he? And it was a slow start, a slow burner. But sometimes when you get two quality fighters in there, they cancel each other out. I won't worry too much about that. If you're in that position again, just to give you a bit of advice, just go with it. If you're winning the rounds, you're nicking the rounds. How many times has Roy Jones Jr. just dominated behind? He's probably landed five, six jabs per round in some of his fights for the first six, seven rounds. But he's winning the fight. He's winning the rounds. He's, he's cancelling out his opponent. He's doing what he needs to do. But you got clipped in round, was it round five, round six when you got clipped? Round five. Was that more, five. I mean, you probably, I don't know if you're going to be honest, but was it more of a balanced thing? It, it was a jab and you looked like... You know you what? Were... It, it was. And I actually spoke to, to John Laban, the referee, um, on Saturday. Yeah. I bumped into him in the hotel. And listen, I'm not one to, to moan and bitch about it. He threw a jab. It kind of landed just off my shoulder into my chest. Two southpaws fighting. So I've gone to look for the left hook to the body. Yeah. I was out of distance. My range wasn't there. I've swung and missed. My, my, my glove touched the canvas. Down, yeah, I jumped straight back up. I wasn't punched in the chain in the body. No. And But you go through the rule book, my glove touched the canvas. It's a knockdown. Yeah. But in hindsight, it was that probably needed to happen. So then I got back to the corner. And Jamie's dead honest with us, Jack. He's starting to creep in front. So that kind of probably gave me the urgency then to, to start 
putting more shots together yeah, yeah. and be a bit more offensive. Yeah, my question was going to be, was you hurt? Was you um, in any trouble? But obviously not. And I didn't think you was. So you, you pretty much answered that. They caught you on the shoulder. Yeah, and, and that apparent. was kind of the thing going into the fight. Uh, Regis, he's a lot of knockouts on his resume. So he's obviously a puncher. And, and I think anyone that's watched me fight over the years, though, um, defensively, I feel sound. I feel like I, I can slow fighters down and bring them down to my pace. And I think for a couple of rounds, Regis was a bit jerky, letting off his jab. After a couple of rounds and the knockdown, I felt, felt like I got my timing and then it was time then to, to start piecing it together. Absolutely. It was a solid performance. I was really impressed. Like I said, a slow start, doesn't matter because you made up for it. And that knockdown gave you a little bit of kick up the arse in the corner by Jamie Moore. And then you started to go to work and you was... He was landing really good, accurate, clean blows, which I've always, I've always liked your style. And you, you get a little bit of criticism just from, you're always going to get critics, but when you look through social media, for example, if I do something, I, I mentioned you on my, my channel earlier this week and people are like, yeah, a bit boring, whatever. What I'm like, you get a few negatives, but some people want to see fights get toe-to-toe, -to -toe, don't they, from round one. They want, they want Hagler Hearns immediately. And they've got, yeah, to, they've and got to understand that. I, that's I not find cool. that, and I get it, as a boxing fan myself, I get it, but... I only have to look at the the group of lads when I turned professional, what, just over 10 years ago, the lads who I turned professional with, none of them are fighting no more. They've had all these all-out wars. There's a lot of wear and tear on the body. And I think the way I've been schooled and curbed over the years is to look after yourself. And, of course, it's a big occasion. I'm fighting in Manchester. It's a big crowd. You want to entertain the fans. But we know as fighters, we want to get in there, do the job, get the win, take as least punishment as possible. And we're on to the next one. Absolutely. I wish I could have done that, mate. If I could have boxed behind the jab and not got caught with shots, I'd have done it all day long. But the only way I could get my shots off was to take a couple on the way in on the end of the hooter, which I've had the beak, I've had the beak straight. You did all right. You did all right. I took a few digs. But anyway, quick quick word on Regis Progray, because for those who don't know, he's a quality world-class operator. And also, in defeat, he was quality as well. Did you did you manage to catch up with him after or have a quick word with him after the fight? You know what? Just in the medical room, I had a couple of stitches on the top of my head. Uh, seen him in the medical room. Um, oh, you know what it's like, fight week. Uh, <coughs> say emotions are running high. There wasn't really any emotions with Regis. It was kind of uh, business as usual. We're there to do a job. Uh, he threw the spanner in the works at the press conference, which was like water of the ducks back to me because... Yeah. Anybody around me knows that I'm quite content and comfortable in, in what I'm doing. I don't let any outside noise affect me. But uh, after the fight, he gave us some nice words in the ring. Uh, we had a couple of minutes in the in the medical room and he was given encouraging words. He said he would love to, to help and give advice if it needed to, to come over and spar in the future. So Class. Uh, there, was, there was a mutual respect there after the fight. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely love that. What do you make of him having his little rant with um, Sam Jones at the press conference? Did that, did that bother you at all? Or getting you know head? what? Quite, quite entertaining. Um, I mean, Eddie Hearn, the TV, the broadcasters, YouTube, they want this stuff. So I get it. Um, in the build-up, we both knew what was riding. We just was talking about becoming a three-time champion. He needed to beat me to get back in the position. Uh, I needed this victory just as much as he did to to gain a world title shot. So we knew what was riding on it, and he found a voice note or a message or something from Sam from from a couple of years ago. And when he read it, I'm like, I'm that focused. We're two days out from the fight. It's uh, he could say anything. It, it, nothing was going to bother me, but. In a weird way, I felt sorry for Sam. Sam Sam was under pressure. Um, That's what I was going to ask. It is what it is. That's what I was going to ask. Did, like, Sam, did you did you find did he find himself justifying it to you off camera? Was he like saying look, or, or was he all right? Did he manage, did he did he pull you to yeah, one side? I could tell. Yesterday? I could tell he wanted to. Yeah. We we did have a chat like that, and I was I put my eye around and said, "Listen, Sam, we've got a big job to do Saturday." To me, it's it was something. It was a conversation about a fight two three years ago. We were trying to do the fight. He was working for somebody else. I said, it's it's nothing to me, so you don't have to explain yourself. Yeah. I get that he wanted to. He's now my manager. And obviously, it wasn't the best look, but uh, we had a laugh about it and uh, yeah. switched off then. It was just business as usual. Yeah, so just just for, just to give a tiny bit of context for people who don't know, um, Sam Jones was talking to um, Regis Brogre a few years ago saying, Jack Catter will be an easy fight for you. Take the fight, but... and that Right hand to God, he'll, he'll flatten him. He'll flatten him, yeah. <laughs> So it's not a good luck when Sam Jones is now managing Jack Cattrall, who I've got on now. But um, it got sorted out, it got washed over. But we like a bit of banter at the press conferences. It yeah. all helped help with building the fight. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. 
sticking with you, who's next for you? I mean, Teofimo Lopez has been mentioned, and what a quality fighter he is, by the way. You yeah. obviously know what he's all about. You, saw, you probably saw his win. I was actually getting inducted, I'm going to talk about myself again now. I was getting inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canasota, and I was watching his fight with Taylor um, on, on the big screen, and it was a great performance, yes. wasn't it, when he beat Josh Taylor? It was, it was. So, I think for these, uh, since the first Taylor fight, and I think, Everything for a reason, but I'd felt like I'd been denied opportunities for whatever reason. Finally got me opportunity. We know what happened with that. We're not bothered about the past. We've drawn a line under it, but yeah. I'm in a position now where I'm 31 years old. I want the big fights. Um, I do believe I'll become world champion in 2025. I agree. And I've kind of left it. It's, it's, it's still fresh. It's been, what, two, three days since the fight, but I've sport to Sam, I've sport to edit, and I've got to get a world title fight next year, and I want to win a world title. And is it Tifima Lopez, Devin Haney? Have you got your, have you got your sights on any anyone so, or one of them? My understanding is Liam Parrow's got the IBF title. He's fighting December the seventh. That's an opportunity or a possibility. Uh, the WBO. I'm told Tifima is going to go up to one forty seven. Which, listen, we would love to fight him. I'd fight him at one forty seven. I'd fight him at one forty. Um, his title might go vacant. We've got uh, Jose Ramirez, ba- Balboza Junior fighting. That could be for the world title. Okay. Um, I do believe the WBO have got a convention on Thursday. So I, I, I hope Sam's going over. Somebody will be going over, pushing us in that direction. But And we've seen this last couple of days, this last 48 hours, talk about um, Devin Haney. Again, another fight that I welcome. But more than anything, I want the opportunity to get a world title. Yeah, and you deserve one. I mean... Uh... Another little bit of background for the for those who've not seen it, which I should have done because most of the people on this channel, Froch on Fighting, the best channel in the business, they're all avid boxing fans. But Jack Cattrall was denied of becoming the undisputed world champion when he fought Josh Taylor in the first fight because Taylor was undisputed. He then lost his um, he lost to Lopez and then he rematched Cattrall with no belts and Cattrall Jack Cattrall who's on now got got the win. So I mean that's a bad pill to swallow, isn't it? I mean I don't want to go back over old ground, but. Really, you deserve to be crowned the unified world champion. And I, I have actually got to throw my hands up. When I watched the fight, I thought you'd won it. I'd scored it. You'd won it by two or three rounds. But I thought you took your foot off the gas late on. And that's why I was picked up and said, I don't know if you were going to mention it, but I, picked, I'm, I was picked up as, as saying, you maybe threw it away in the end because you kind of, you was that far ahead and you was comfortable and you, did, you didn't want to take shots. So you finished the fight on your back foot and maybe got caught of a couple. And you give the judges an opportunity to to rob you. Do you subscribe to that or do you think, no? I'd... You know what? Yes, I know. I think sometimes I, I can fall in that trap where if I feel like I'm winning the fight and I'm controlling, I probably bring the pace down to my pace where yeah. uh, I understand I was in his back garden. I do think I won clearly. Maybe I should have pushed it. Maybe not. It's happened now. It's done. Yeah, it's done and done. I believe I won the fight. But yeah, yeah pro- probably could have gone out there. But who's to say if I took them them extra risks when I was that far ahead, when I got chinned, who knows, but it is what it is now. Sometimes you've got to take the decision out of the judges' hands and really make sure and drive it home, but once you're champ, you seem to get that benefit of the doubt, so when you do eventually become crowned world champion, whoever you fight, Haney or Lopez, because the Lopez fight's a tough fight for you, would you agree that? Would you be confident going into that, obviously, but would you agree you're in a bit of a tough fight there? Depends which... Yeah, listen, I think at this level now, and and obviously Uh, you've been there, got the T-shirt... I think when once you're at that world level, I think every fight poses big risk and they're all going to be tough fights. Lopez, you would say, out of the four champs, he's number one in the division. Mm. Uh, I want to test myself, Carl. I want to fight the best. Uh, I'm not afraid of losing. I think I've got the beating of all these guys. I think I can draw them all in. I think I can beat them all. So, uh, of course, it's a tough fight, but... I'm having a little rest and I'll yeah. be back in the gym and I'll be per- preparing for all of them. Absolutely. Talking about a rest, what do you do after you finish boxing? Um, as in, when you've just boxed, do you get a load of food? Are you a big eater? Are you a Ricky Hatton? Or are you I wouldn't a, a... say, would say I'm a massive eater. No. Uh, um, you know, it's, again, you know what it's like. It's been, uh, I've been living on the top floor for now for the last couple of months. I've been out of everybody's way, keeping, keeping myself to myself, training, yeah. eating. I feel like institutionalised, but it's nice. We are... Uh, We've had a couple of coffees, spend time with a little girl. Uh, we've got holiday book next week, so that'll be nice. Bit of uh, sunshine, bit of winter sun. And just catching up with family. Uh, nothing too crazy. Bit of nice food. We've got Halloween Thursday. Looking forward to that, taking the little and trick-or-treating. Yeah, I love it. Then. And just, just family stuff. How many kids you got, actually? 
Just got the one. We've got a little daughter. She's three. So oh, she's three keeping us old, busy. Yeah. Oh, you're in the thick of it then. Great age, three years old. Mine are all getting oh, old it's, now. it's absolutely brilliant. Up to about five, six when I start realising about all the, all the Santa and the tooth fairy and the, the unicorns oh, and all the sunshines and rainbows and spring. They've got it all to come. It all, it all vanishes when they get a bit older. My youngest now is nine years old she is. So she's... Um, we're actually taking the, wow. them all to Lapland in Christmas and she's still, I've got to be quiet, she's in the background, she's off school, she still believes in Santa, she does, so it's going to be fantastic. Oh, I see, it's amazing, I love like it. it. There's nothing better is there than your kids. No, yeah. I've got a big family, Carl, I've got uh, seven brothers and three sisters, so we've uh, there's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, Christmas is nice, it's, uh, everybody gets along, loads yeah, of brothers and sisters, so it'd be, just looking forward to spending that time with everybody and... Uh, just catching up. Yeah, I love that. Love that, mate. And you can get Christmas out of the way without winning your belt and look forward to 2025. That can be your year. I'm confident. I'm not just saying it because I've got you on. You know what I'm like here on Frotch and Fight. I tell the truth. And um, you're a top fighter. I've always rated you. And you've proven it a couple of times. And for you to not be crowned world champion, for me, it's a travesty. So hopefully 2025 will be your year. You've got Hills back in you now. Eddie Hearn, your promoter, he's behind you. He's looking for big fights as well. He's He's got that bit between his teeth now because he knows you've proven yourself a couple of times. So I'm sure he'll um, he'll do the business for you. Well, ho hopefully now, like you said, have a little breast back in the gym and uh, 25, let's do it. Absolutely. What's it like working with um, my old mate Jamie Moore? How do you get on with him in the gym and out? The Jamie gym? Moore and Nigel Travis yeah. uh, have been massive for me. And not just in my boxing career, as, as uh, men and mentors that I look up to. Yeah. And I say this, people, when you're doing interviews or speaking to people, uh, how do you cope with situations? I surround myself with good people. I don't go out a lot. I have a great family. I have a great network of people. And Jamie and Nigel are right up there. Yeah. Uh, outside of boxing, uh, I'd like to class them as, as close friends. Uh, Jamie, I've been with Jamie and Nigel now since about 2017. You've been with both the of them together got strong. Time. Nigel and Jamie Moore. Nigel, Travis and Jamie Moore. Yeah, yeah. So I train with them both every right. day of the week. Uh, and and it's a funny one. So you find yourself spending more time with with my boxing coaches than you do with your immediate family. I'm with them every family. day, so absolutely, um, it's good. And they are two genuine people, world class coaches, and long may it continue working with them. Yeah, his um, his dad um, Travis. His dad is it Nigel Travis? It is Nigel Travis. His dad Calvin. Yeah. So, oh, his dad his dad's Calvin Travis. Yes. Because I've, I got confused because I've never really met Nigel much, but. Calvin Travis, I used to work for him on the England squad at the, um, where was it? It was in Crystal Palace in London when I first started, me and David Hay going down there. We, we just, uh, mate, his dad's as mad as a hat. He probably won't mind me saying that. Oh, yeah, and you think his dad's mad. You should meet Nigel. You, you'll have seen Nigel with his flat cap, but, yeah, yeah. they're both mad. I was going to say, is he, is, he, is he similar, is he? I'd say he's even more mad. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows the stuff, doesn't he? He knows he's boxing. Yeah, we're talking about two people, two former fighters. Nigel was a top amateur, Jamie, amateur yeah. and professional. Uh, they've been around the game and I think that's what gives me confidence training with them. Two guys who've, who've been there, they've laced up the gloves, uh, yeah. they've actually boxed themselves so, yeah, it's uh, it's and great. they've got deep history in the sport. So when Absolutely. I'm working with them, I feel a real confidence. Yeah, I had Matthew Macklin on last week and um, I've actually got Jamie Moore on after you. Um, oh, and nice. can you remember? Did you ever see that fight with Matthew Macklin and, and Jamie Moore? Did you ever watch it? I did, I yes. Seen the highlights, but I mean, that was some fight because Macklin was a bit of a hand. Macklin used to try and just outwork his opponent and work on pace and fitness and put pressure on. And he just he just blowing out his ass when he by about round five or six, overdid it. Oh, yeah, he went all in. Yeah, Nigel, what a fight. Nigel took his time. Sorry, Jamie Moore took his time, sat back, and then landed Denny clean on the chin and just fucking ironed him out. And that was. I uh, think it popped up, I think, was it? Am I correct in saying it was about 10 years ago? Uh, yeah. It popped up on my memories. It could be even well, longer. longer it popped than up that. Uh, not been, so long ago. I've been retired 10 years. It was, it was before that. It's longer. But, um, it was before that, weren't it? It might even be 20. Absolutely. Wow. But no, he knows his stuff, Jamie Moore. And obviously, he's been through it as well. Because what happened out in Marbella, if you've not seen that, for the watchers, get a look at the history of what happened with Jamie Moore. But um, he got away with that one. I think it was mistaken. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, close call. But yeah, he's, he's still with us. Yeah, I've met his, um, his young lad as well. He, took, he used to take his young lad. When I used to work for Sky... He took his young lad along with him. Lovely young kid. Yeah, young Mike is in the gym. Mike is training, uh, yeah. looking well. So, and he he's he was out at the weekend supporting us. So, yeah, it's right. it's a good it's a good gym to be in. And uh, oh, great, mate. a lot of, of I think over the last couple of years, I think the dynamics changed. We've talked about like uh, Carl Frampton, Martin Murray, Rocky Fielding, Tommy Cole. I've, I've yeah. kind of gained the experience off the older fighters now, and I find myself in the gym with a lot of younger prospects and. Uh, 
a full variety of characters, so it's, it's a good mix in the gym. Yeah, it's good when you're around that youth and enthusiasm with your young ones, because you're training with them and you, you kind of find yourself keeping up with them and trying to dig in that little, because they've got all that enthusiastic, aren't they, that start, when I started training. Yeah, guy, it's, uh, it's good, it's, uh, everybody's pushing each other, trying to, trying to beat each other, get better times, and yeah, uh, being yeah. like one of the older ones now, it's good to have that energy, and like you said, I've got to keep up with them and show them that I'm still the boss. What are you, are you 32? 31. 31 are you? Don't want to, I don't want to put yes. years on you. You're 31. No, don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, mate, before I let you go, I always do a 12 rounds, 12 rounds with a Cobra. 12 rounds with a Cobra. So I've got 12 quick fire questions and they end up not being quick fire, but make them as short or sweet as you want. So okay. I'm going to ask you, favorite, first question, favorite fighter of all time? Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, that's a great answer. Any particular, do you like, you obviously like that style. See, I'd say Duran over Leonard, but you're obviously, the way you fight is, I can see how you can appreciate Leonard more than Duran. Yeah. It's 1-1 one, one for them two as well, isn't it? They beat each other, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Right, favourite place you've visited, second question. Favourite place I've visited? Holiday-wise, Jamaica. Jamaica, oh, what a place that is. I remember I was out there, I'm not name-dropping now, but I was out there with David Hay and Lennox Lewis. We went to one of Lennox Lewis's mansion in Jamaica and he took Oof. us, we drove down to, is it Negril, all the way to the end of the island. Yes. And there was, um, there was a lot of weed on the route. <laughs> we stopped at the beach as well. We had some snapper fish. The guy was pulling them out of the sea and putting them on his barbecue. That was uh, mine and my wife's first holiday 2015 and we are going to go back one time. But Ooh. yeah, we love we love Jamaica, mate. Unbelievable place. Great shout, Jamaica. Right, favorite sport to watch other than boxing? <coughs> um, Are you into tennis or golf or anything like that? Like individual? You know what? We went to Wimbledon. I'm going to say tennis. Yeah, we went to Wimbledon. I was privileged enough to get a, a gift. I went to Wimbledon this year, and what an event! Never yeah. been before. Yeah. And big tennis fan now. Yeah, I've been in the Royal Box a few times, mate. People will hate me for saying oh, that. Oh, come on, talking Carl. About, talking about myself. I got sent to court. <laughs> hey, mate, sent to court finals, wicked. I mean, what a game tennis is. You know, the individual, when you're from boxing, the individual sports like, like tennis, you can sort of resonate with them because that mindset and that, that discipline of being one on one. Because team sports, team sports are obviously great to watch. Putting yeah, the ball, team sports. The ball I've never been a football net. fan, never been massive in football, but. I find myself uh, <coughs> shifting between different sports. But like you said, the individual ones, yeah, we yeah. love tennis. And uh, anyone listening to the Cobras podcast, we want to go back to Wimbledon next year. Yeah, definitely. Let's get on it, mate. We'll, we'll jump on it. We'll see who's in the final. But it's changing, changing the guard a little bit now. And the Dow's about finished. Fedra's moved on. There's, there's a couple of Sipsy Pass and um, there's a couple of new ones coming through. Some young lads. If there's someone, um, there's a few lads locally, actually, that go to the David Lloyd in Nottingham that's real oh, young, nice. young kids that have really got I mean I thought I could play tennis till I played a couple of these 11 12 year old pros and I realised I've got no I've got no future in tennis man. <laughs> I'm getting a bit old as well even though I don't don't look it right where are we question number four sum up Tiafima Lopez in three words sorry about some of these questions mate my producer sometimes no it's alright Tiafima Lopez in three words very emotional fighter <laughs> emotional fighter yeah yeah, he just seems, outside of the ring for me, he just seems very up and down, one way, yeah. the other way. Yeah, sometimes um, you don't know what you're going to get with Lopez, do you? I don't know what you're going to get, so I say, I say Tio's emotional. Yeah, that's a good good answer, actually. And there was a time when he was talking about retirement, wasn't there? I mean, after the Taylor yeah, fight, he was so, talking about retiring, and then he decided yeah. not to. So, no, that's, that's fair enough. He is, he is very emotional, and you could maybe you could maybe tap into that. But you, you, you're pretty quiet yourself, though, aren't you? You're just a, you're just a bit of a... You're just a I'm, of I'm quietly confident. I don't... Uh, this whole world now, I understand it. You've got to be out there. You've got to be on YouTube and Instagram. But yeah. it's not my world. But I take, I do my bit. But yeah. I like to keep things quiet. Yeah. Listen, this one always pops up. This question, and don't feel don't feel obliged to to, to lie to me. Prime Triple G, Prime Cobra. Who wins? Prime Triple G. I would say if he didn't chin you, I think you'd beat him. Yeah. And Ooh. I think we can we can agree that you've got a good chin. So. I'm going to go Cobra on points. I'm bigger than him, aren't I? I don't know. He's, um, I'm 168. He's 160 usually. He's middle, he's middleweight. I'm more super... I'm super you think big. you could stop him or not? Um, to be honest, mate, he's solid in this solid granite chin like myself. I think it'd be a war. Yeah, I think I think once he, once he's hit you and you've absorbed it and you've felt... I think you beat him on points. Oh, nice one. I'll take that. You've got, you've got, I've got to be totally honest though, mate. It's going to be... I'm going to struggle to chin... 
Triple G and skill set wise and ability and natural talent wise, mate, is, 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 is chalk and cheese as in, is in his favour. He's far more superior skill wise, but I make up for a lot of it in toughness and refusal yeah. to quit. But um, let's not waffle on about me. We've got you on to talk to you. <laughs> well, talk, talk to me. So you reckon I'd have done him one point? Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Right, what's your favourite food to eat? Me, I like a Sunday roast, uh, chicken dinner. Roast potatoes, loads of mash and gravy, bit of stuffing. Yeah, sounds good. That's my kids' favourite. My two of my daughters, both my daughters. That, that's one of my favourites. Uh, my second favourite's got to be like a like a pizza. Love a pizza. Really, a bit of a cheat meal. What about steak? Don't you like so many health benefits with steak? Yeah, it? I love a steak, but I find myself like I appreciate a nice steak, but if I go to a restaurant, I like eating a bit of fish, a bit of sea bass. Yeah, uh, but if I was to, uh, if I was to. Be on death row, it'd be a Sunday roast, sticky yeah. toffee pudding for dessert. Nice, sticky toffee pudding. Oof. Next time you next time you're in Sainsbury's, mate, or whichever wherever you shop, because there's a Sainsbury near me, and they're doing organic ribeye steak. Cook that yeah. medium rare, get some salt on it, and tell me that that's not your favourite meal next time we speak. I'll, I'll give it a do. Organic ribeye covered in salt, cooked in a little bit <sighs> of butter. But there's quite a lot of fat on ribeye, so it cooks in its own fat. It's tasty, mate. Get a, get a 28 day mature on as well, and aged. I'm going too much now on the steak, aren't I? I'll move on. <laughs> Have you got a hidden talent? What everyone's got a hidden talent. What's yours? My hidden talent. Um, you know what, Carl? I like to think I'm quite good at everything, really. Really? Um, yeah. You know what? I'm I am good at, and I was playing last night. I'm good at pool. I oh, think really? I beat you in a pool match. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, like I, a game I, of I, pool. I grew up in pubs, so a bit of poker, a bit of pool, a bit of scrapping. But I like. Yeah. I was in the local, I was in the pool team. I bet you. Do you snooker though? Because you're cagey, aren't you? There. I bet you snooker, don't you? Sit on the cushion like a, like, like a dirt bag. Do you like a snooker? Like yeah, a dirt bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I've not had time. Uh, you find yourself when when you're boxing. I guess maybe when I retire, I'll have more time. But I do like snooker. I've not been for years. But yeah, I'm mean, partial to a game of pool, and I like to think I'm all right at it. Yeah, yeah, I like a game of pool. I'll give you a fresh in one day, mate. Yeah, cheers. I, cheers. I was with Stephen Hendry a couple of weeks ago on snooker, then we had a game of pool. I thought, I'll do him on pool. He'd done me 3 0. He, he ate oh. ball me as well on the second go. I, I took, I, I broke off and then he cleared up. So that wasn't really fair, was it? Yeah, that's not great. Right, another question. Where are we? Number, we're on number nine now. No, we're not. We're on number eight. Round eight. What would you do if you wasn't a boxer? What would I do? So I'm quite into the fitness uh, industry and I've not pulled the trigger on it yet, but I enjoy being in the gym, staying <coughs> fit, running, cycling, swimming. Uh, so I'd like to think I could put myself in a position to help others, opening a gym, becoming a personal trainer, uh, something in the fitness industry. Really? Not a boxing gym, just just a fitness gym? Yeah, I, listen, I, I love boxing. It's my passion, but um, you know what I enjoy? Uh, and I think a lot of boxers, I enjoy the sparring, but I enjoy strength and conditioning. Yeah. I've got a great strength and conditioning coach from Birmingham, Johnny Velocity, and I love the work that he does. Yeah. And I think if I wasn't fighting, I'd like to be maybe in the boxing gym, but some type of gym environment. So, mate, I, I used to love people, people like, don't understand the people that like the fitness, but the strength and conditioning, which was always hard. I used to enjoy it when I was in my prime. I love it. That's that's one of it. Aside from sparring, hitting the pads, yeah. strength and conditioning is right up there for me. Yeah, getting in there with press ups and pull ups and um, <coughs> sit ups and dips, all the all the all the groundwork and that. Do you do many yeah. weights when you when you do any boxing? Do you lift weights at all? Yeah, so twice a week I do my strength and conditioning, two to three times a week, squats, deadlifts. Um, all the different energy systems, assault yeah, bikes, so rowers, ski ergs. Yeah, because they're yeah, compound, so they're we have compound a... exercise. I never used to do much compound stuff until I went over to Sheffield, but the deadlifting and that, you've got to be careful with your back. But you've got to be careful, of, and I've got, I'm, I'm blessed with a great coach, but we have like programs, so we're 10, 12, 15 weeks, and we have it all yeah. blocked out for different blocks, and everything becomes lighter and faster, and uh, yeah. yeah, I enjoy that kind of work. Yeah, that's good. Listen, I can probably I can hear my producer screaming down my ear all, even though I ain't got an earpiece, and I know what he'll be saying. Move on, Frotch. So, number nine. Round number nine. We're getting there. We're in the championship rounds now. Right. Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury rematch. Who wins? Um, my heart, I want to say Fury. Support your own. He's been British, but my head just says Usyk. I don't know. He, listen, it was... Uh, it slipped away from him. I felt like he was he was winning the early rounds. He let go of it. 
has he made the adjustments or is it an easy adjustment to make? But um, if I go in my head, I have to say Usyk again. Usyk, yeah. I mean, the first part was close, but the fact that Fury nearly got stopped, was it round nine? It was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. I've never seen him in so much trouble. I know he's been on the floor a couple of times, but to be to be punched from one... Listen, I, I would love for Fury to do it again, um, but it's, it's for me, it's a hard one. Yeah. And I'd have to say you sit. He knows how to step it up, doesn't he, you see? You know, if he has a bad round, he comes out the next round, doesn't he, and adjusts and just puts a good performance on and almost gets a stoppage. It's just he did it with AJ, didn't he, a couple of times. He done it with Yeah. Done it with Fiori. And now he's now he's boxed Fiori already. I just feel that the rematch he's gonna he's gonna know a little bit more, isn't it? Maybe, maybe mm. not. We'll find out, won't we, before Christmas. It's a Christmas we'll bonus. See, fight, a couple of weeks. Really looking forward to that one. So Chris Eubank Jr., round number ten. Chris Eubank Jr. is on. He's still boxing. Still on the scene. Still calls himself a pro fighter, even though I've been critical. Cause he's, not, he's not. He's not. Listen. He's not busy enough. He's, it, for me, the ambition's yeah. not there. I think he just wants to earn the old, the old Bunsen burner. That's all he wants. Bottom line, he wants the money. Talking about fighting Canelo Alvarez. How do you see that one going? If that ever happens. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward for Canelo. I don't think. Listen, I don't know, but I just think, for me, I've got the ambition. I want to be world champion. Of course, I want what comes with it to be financially secure and look after my family. But I want to be world champion. And like you said, I think Chris Eubank, sometimes he, he's talking about fighting Conor Ben. He's talking about fighting Canelo. Of course, he wants the big fights. We all want the big fights. Does he want to become world champion? Has he got that, that drive and that passion to do it? Um, but back to your question, I think I think Canelo, pretty straightforward for him. Straightforward. That's a polite way of saying an easy win mismatch, that is. Um, yeah. Because it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I just don't. Well, I do get it. Chris Eubank wants to earn the money. Chris Eubank Jr. wants to earn the money, and that is a big fight. But, um, yeah, I agree with you there, mate. So, round number 11, closing in now on the finish. What's this? Sum up Chorley in a sentence. The greatest town on earth. Well, often when I meet people, I tell them that Chorley is the centre of the earth. Really? And they believe me. Uh, it's a small market town up north in Lancashire. Uh, I was born there, grew up there. Fantastic town. Um, I do my bit, try and, uh, I don't know, I do my bit. People know that I'm from Charlie. But yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic town. Great support and I love it. It's nice when you've got, whenever, you know when you've got a good sense of community, which is dying a lot up and down the country now. I mean, I grew up, I was in Newark from the age of 15, a little town called Coddington in Newark. We've got a pub out there. And you know, the little villages and towns, we've, we've been to Chesterfield, we've been, we've been up and down the country in and around different areas. A uh, place called um, Aspid de la Zouche and... Um, where was that other place? Was that was well, a small place near Derby? And when you've got little towns, and Chorley for me is one of them towns. Is, am I right in thinking everybody knows who you are, and you pretty much know everybody? Yeah, it's uh, it's a small town, and we we laugh. Me and me, my wife laugh. We go into cities, and uh, you see people leave the apartments, and you don't know nobody from Adam. We we can walk out, and we're just outside of Chorley Town Centre, a couple yeah. of miles, but we drive into town, and you know everybody, and. Uh, People don't get that in cities. You, you're in London. You don't know nobody from Adam. You're just walking about willy nilly. Yeah. But yeah, we're a, we're a small, close knit town. It's it's great. We support each other, and uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, wicked mate. I love that. Shout out to Charlie. Shout out to Charlie. I love them. I love them small towns. Um, that small town vibe and that feel. But um, it can be a bit on top because everyone knows your business sometimes. But it's good to have. Yeah, listen, and, and I think. You've got to find the balance of no when to when to be knocking about when to not. But yeah, listen, I'm a quiet person. I keep myself to myself. But we've got a great time. We we'll go out in town and uh, do me bits of shopping and stuff. And it's nice. And you see familiar faces, and yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Right, twelfth and final round. I think I know the answer to this one already. 2025. Jack Cattrall becomes a world champion. True or false? True. True. I've been. Uh, I feel like. I'm on a good run. I've had three fights in 12 months. I'm going to enjoy a little break for two weeks. I'm going to pick up training in December and I'm manifesting it and working for it. And in 2025, I'm going to be crowned world champion. Absolutely. Listen, mate, we'll leave it. We'll leave it on that one. I totally, I totally believe you. Um, when I look into your eyes when you're saying that, when I see you performing in the ring against the guys you, you've been performing against, Josh Taylor twice, um, Regis Progre Saturday night. That was a quality performance, and just just the way that you're the way that you conduct yourself in and out of the ring, and when you get the when you start landing them shots. I, like I said earlier, I wish I had the ability 
to to not get punched. I'm looking at you now. You're boxed on Saturday. You haven't got, <laughs> you haven't got a scratch on you. I look like Rocky after the, Rocky Balboa, number, <laughs> number one and two. I look, I look, I'm probably not that bad, but I did look, I did look like I've been in a fight. You don't even look like you've been in a fight, mate. But um, oh, thank you, Carl. I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on the podcast. Thank you for your time. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure to have you on, and we'll have you on again in the future. I'm sure I've got Jamie Moore to contend with now, so we'll have a bit of a laugh with him. But wicked, mate. Thanks for coming on. You've been um, God bless. You have a good week, and hopefully we'll catch up soon. Absolutely. You take care, Jack.